When you were a kid, if you were anything like me at least, you probably had a book series that was special to you. One that started when you were a kid and kept releasing new books as you got older. And this was awesome because it was like experiencing history in the making. For many, that series was Harry Potter. But for me, well, it was Artemis Fowl. The super cool, super genius, and super edgy super villain with a mix of cyberpunk tech and fairy tale thrown in for good measure. And as a kid, this stuff was just beyond cool. But beneath the shiny surface, the series tackled real issues like sexism and greed with a morally ambiguous protagonist at the center, wrapped in some excellent, witty, and sarcastic writing. However, as much as I loved it, I eventually fell off the train, unlike other series I stuck with, and it got me wondering what became of the series, preceding and after the disastrous movie adaptation in 2020. In this video, we'll delve into what made Artemis Fowl so special, why the series may have lost some of its steam over the years, and explore the timeline of the books and spin-offs, and finally answer the question, whatever happened to Artemis Fowl? Hi everyone, my name is Otto, and welcome to Exits Examines. We'll be exploring the lives of people, companies, and more after their prime time has seemingly come to an end. If that sounds good to you, there's a like and subscribe button below. Now, I want you to imagine you are in the far off and strange worlds of 2001, because this is when the very first Artemis Fowl book released. You have to remember that this was THE Harry Potter era, and as such, Artemis Fowl was inevitably compared to it. Sure, both series featured hidden fantasy worlds and young male protagonists, but the similarities in there full stop. Artemis Fowl is no Harry Potter. He is a 12-year-old super genius supervillain who kidnaps magical fairy beings means for schemes to restore his family's fortune. The author, Owen Coffer, described the series as die hard with fairies, which should give you an idea of just how unique and at times unhinged the world is. The world is this captivating clash of modern technology and classic fairy tales, but the fairies here are anything but the sweet wing versions you know. After moving underground to escape from humanity, they live in a grimy city-state that feels more like a crazy underground version of Night City from Cyberpunk. Take Holly Short, our elven protagonist, as an example. She's equipped with James Bond-worthy gadgets and has to deal with very real and very human problems like sexism in a male-dominated police force. And this is what these books do so well. They delight in revisiting old tropes with a fresh twist. There's a veteran officer back in action to save a rookie, the ambitious second-in-command scheming for a promotion, the genius inventor, and these are all mixed together to deliver some truly remarkable and unique scenes. I mean, who could ever forget Butler 1v1ing a troll with armor? armor, a mace, and a pistol. I don't care what you say, it does not get more awesome than that. Basically, this book shattered the young adult fantasy mold. Artemis was nothing like any protagonist at the time. He's arrogant, his intentions are bad, he doesn't respect anyone. He's a privileged brat who, unfortunately, can back it up. I mean, for 2001, this was truly revolutionary. But the great thing is that Artemis and the rest of the characters, they're not really that one note. Artemis isn't a villain per se, and he's got nuance. But hey, the fairies aren't exactly saints either. And this is what I love about the series. It trusts readers to navigate a world without clear-cut heroes and villains, and roles get switched around all the time. This complexity and delightful lack of black and white is what makes Artemis Fowl so darn special. And this is all on top of the writing itself, which is light, full of brevity, and witty. I mean, it's clear Colfer understands what young readers are drawn to, and his sarcasm and surrealism keeps the tone engaging. He actually even wrote the gnomish language for the books, which I'm proud to say I was able to translate when I was younger. This is all to say that Artemis Fowl was massively successful and would launch a series that would have its fair share of ups and downs over the years, so let's get into it. The Artemis Fowl series spans a whopping eight books, released between 2001 and 2012. Interestingly, the first book is the outlier in the way that later installments have Artemis collaborating with Holly and the other fair folk, as they're called. This all really begins to shift in the Eternity Code. This pivotal entry marks Artemis' transition from a cunning child to a complex teenager trying to come to terms with himself. But by the end, his relationship with Holly evolves into a genuine friendship forged through adversity. So we'll talk about this more later, but as as the series continued, things can get a bit formulaic, but there are some genuinely great ideas and shockingly tense moments that will 100% snap you to attention, with some surprisingly brutal deaths like in the Opal Deception. 
So you might be saying to yourself, well, this all sounds great. What's the problem? Why would these books ever stop? Well, Colfer stated that the series was originally going to be a trilogy, and this might have been for the better because things do start to get formulaic. As the series progresses, things start to feel stagnant with minimal character development. It's hard though, because throughout the series, there are some genuinely strong ideas present in almost every single book, but eight books might have been overkill. It might have been tighter if things were condensed, and the reason I say this is because as much as I love the series, for every interesting and engaging plot point or concept, there are like two or three that literally don't go anywhere. The episodic nature of the series lends itself to this feeling of stagnation, with all the plot points being tied up nicely at the end of each book. I mean, say what you will about Harry Potter, but it had a mostly cohesive story across the entire series from start to finish. It breaks my heart to say, but the Fowl series, on the other hand, often retreads familiar grounds over and over. And speaking of Harry Potter, it's writing Age with the Reader, which is another missed opportunity with Artemis Fowl. Take romance, right? While Artemis experiences puberty throughout the series, the books offer only a few fleeting acknowledgments of this, and always with unresolved plot threads. Minerva just kind of disappears, and the thing with Holly, which by the way, even Colfer himself said in interviews is gross, also goes nowhere. While you could say that the character Artemis himself may not be interested in romance, the issue is that the book fails to address relatable themes that would have resonated with the maturing audience. While there were jokes, characters, and moments that feel and are very adult, in more fundamental ways, the series never manages to grow up. Despite losing steam over the years, fans have been clamoring for a movie adaptation since as early as 2001, and by 2020, they hoped the movie would be the shot in the arm the series desperately needed. But buckle up, because oh boy. Okay, so remember what I talked about at the start of the video about what made the original book so special? The complicated and adult themes, the moral ambiguity of the characters, and the inversion of tropes? Well, throw literally all of that out the window because that's definitely what the writers did for this movie. Now, this makes slightly more sense when you look at the film's production because it's one of the most insane and cursed things I've seen across all the various series I've covered, which is saying something. But at the start, plans for the Artemis Fowl film seem promising though, and by 2003, Colfer announced a completed screenplay and casting, but it wasn't meant to be and the film languished in development hell for a decade before Disney came and saved it. It was then announced that it would be co-produced by, drumroll please, The Weinstein Company, the perfect people you want making your kids movie, right? Well, this of course blew up in their faces following the sexual misconduct controversy and as if fate was determined to test this movie, COVID-19 forced the film to postpone in 2019. Finally, after a journey spanning decades, the film unceremoniously dropped in May 2020 and well, let's just say the results were less than magical. So what made this movie the poster child of how not to do an adaptation? Basically because everything that made Artemis Artemis Fowl, Artemis Fowl, was thrown out the window. Take Artemis Fowl himself as an example. What makes him unique is that he's this morally ambiguous criminal mastermind who will do whatever it takes to make a fortune. And so the movie throws all of this out to make him this lukewarm, joking, surfing kid who just wants to please his father. Speaking of, in the movie, his dad literally hands him all the info on the fairies, which seriously detracts from Artemis being this resourceful genius. And this is not the only case. Take almost every plot point or character and sabotage all of them. Every single one. Holly Short being this resourceful, quick-thinking cop despite a misogynistic workforce. Well, it turns out that in the movie, Commander Root has been gender swapped for no reason, so that totally undercuts Holly's character. Butler being a living weapon? Nope, he gets destroyed by a chandelier, and by the way, race swap him even though he was stated to be Eurasian multiple times in the books. Artemis's mother? Nope, she's just out of the movie entirely. I could go on and on here, but this isn't even the end of it, and they tried to fit way, way too much in here with them throwing in Opal's character and this fairy MacGuffin that serves to drive the plot forward. And this is all on top of this really strange decision to wrap the entire movie in the framing device of Mulch narrating. 
In an attempt to make the characters and plot more likable and inclusive, they strayed way too far from the source material. And if they wanted to create a new story, they should have made one, not slap the Artemis Fowl name on it. And at the end of the day, it just lacked the character, humor, and richness that we had in the actual books. Unsurprisingly, fans were not happy. The movie was panned by critics and ultimately pulled from Disney+. Plus. This is a shame in some ways though, because officially there's no way to watch this film. Now, I know, I know it may be for the better with this film, but it definitely sets a disturbing precedent for the future if digital media like this can just go up in smoke. Fortunately, there were other adaptations out there, including the graphic novels. These are a little confusing because there's been multiple editions over the years with different art styles and all of them starting and stopping at different points, but almost all of them I've come across have done a delightful job illustrating the world in a really nice way. On the video game front, the titles I found were insanely obscure. We got one called Artemis Fowl Inner Circle, and there's almost no information about this. I know that the premise is that a troll has ransacked Fowl Manor, and you have to decode clues, but I'm not even entirely sure how to play this. It must have been a Flash game on the Artemis Fowl website or something in like the early 2000s, but if anyone has played this, I'd love to know more about it. Speaking of obscure Flash game entries, there's also apparently a German Artemis Fowl game that was used to promote The Lost Colony, but I could find even less information about this. I was also shocked to learn that there was a DS game released in 2009. It's basically a cool little ebook where where you can click on links for more information and collect items of the first few books in the series. It's too bad there hasn't been more games in this series though because flying around Haven or taking on a troll with some armor would be pretty sweet. There's other great stuff out there as well, including the side books. These include the Artemis Fowl Files, which features a number of short stories and is packed with bonus content like Artemis Fowl's school reports, interviews from characters, and text from the Fairy People's book. There's also Artemis Begins, which is not a story directly related to the Artemis Fowl universe, but Colfer telling the short story of what inspired the book series. Aside from this though, there are a number of companion books like Guide to the World of Fairies, so there's no shortage of content out there. So what about the series in recent years? Following the release and subsequent flop of the movie adaptation, Colfer wrote a brand new series focusing on Artemis' younger twin brothers. There are three books in total. The Foul Twins, The Foul Twins Deny All Charges, and The Foul Twins Get What They Deserve. The writing style is lighter and breezier and geared towards a middle grade audience, as Colfer himself has acknowledged. There are some good moments in here, but the focus is squarely on humor, and it's important to manage expectations. The twins are not Artemis. If you're looking for a continuation of the original Artemis Fowl series, this might not really be it. But if you're open to something slightly different in the universe, the Fowl twins are definitely worth checking out. So by all accounts, it looks like the series has wrapped up as of 2021 after the movie thing. But this might actually not be the end. While promoting the twin series, Colfer revealed plans for a darker and grittier Artemis Fowl. This new trilogy would follow a grown-up Artemis corrupted by power and even hinted at a romance between Artemis and Holly. Now, I think this would be really cool and would be great for fans of the series who have grown up, but unfortunately, this probably won't happen. With Colfer saying in a recent interview as of 2023 that he thought the Artemis series was quote, done to death, and there will be no more novels. It's kind of a shame though, because it has to make you wonder if the whole film thing ruined the series for him. So whatever happened to Artemis Fowl? Well, the series has had its fair share of ups and downs, but it's been surprisingly active in recent years. And despite the film's debacle, it seems like there still is a passionate fan base. So we can just hope that we get an adaptation we deserve or even better, a continuation. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate all the help as I try to get this channel off the grounds. If you want to do more to support me, feel free to check out my Patreon link in the description below. And huge shout out to my patrons, you guys are the best. If you ever have any suggestions about what you want me to cover next, just let me know in the comments. It's always really great to hear what you have to say. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. Bye.